welcome to episode 70 of the Zines and Roger Crochet Vlogcast. I am Rosina, a crochet designer who lives in the southwest of the UK at the minute. <laughs> Looking out the window at the southwest. <laughs> um, I do hope you will. Thank you for joining me. Um, if I forget to say it at the end, uh, if you want to, you can like and subscribe because I post usually once a fortnight on YouTube. It used to be more when I did tutorials, but I haven't done a tutorial for a very long time. I haven't written them off completely. I have one in mind for the future, sort of, maybe soon. I won't talk about that though, because there's no point. Right. I'm going to try and not be an excitable creature this time round. I'll just take it easy, be chilled out. <laughs> so I hope that you are doing lots of crochet, knitting and sewing and all whatever it is you like to do that's crafty. I have been doing loads, loads and loads and loads. Some of it bizarre, like completely out of the ordinary, um, like Saturday morning when I um, went to Exeter with the family and made them all help me put up a display of all my crochet work in a shop window. It's a long story-ish and I should probably write a blog post about it. I took lots of photographs and I would like to share that with you because it was really exciting and I felt very pleased that I can showcase crochet on the high street in Exeter. That's nuts. Like super nuts. <laughs> um, I think it was through Facebook. Um, I just saw an, an, uh, somebody had put up saying, look, there's some empty shops in the high street. They look ugly being empty. If you've got some artwork and you want to show it off, doesn't matter how big or small you are, um, get in touch and we'll try and sort you out. So that's exactly what I did and that's a long story short. I would like to write a blog post. I liked I liked it. It was great. It was a really good sort of like this weird sort of empty shop that seriously is like an empty old shop and it looks like it's not the best part of Exeter High Street, it's up the up the top end which is Sidwell Street. And um so it's a bit run down and I think the idea is is that probably they're not going to repopulate the shops with actual new shops because they're going to demolish the lot. That's the kind of idea I'm getting. And they, but they've been saying that for years, so who knows? Um, but like 20 years ago, I lived on Sidwell Street. I lived a, I lived above a jewellery shop, Mr Kent. Was it called Kent's Jewellers? He was called Mr Kent. This really old guy who I was always a bit sort of like, he was always a bit dodgy, <laughs> but for some reason I didn't care, I found that quite interesting. I was, I was, I was a fool sometimes. Um, like, the house where I lived, that it was a flat above a shop, and there was no separate entrance to the flat, like the, the guy that owned the shop was downstairs and he could come and go as he pleased. He didn't, that I'm aware of, do that. <laughs> but there was always kind of that sort of slight, sense that he might just come in and watch you while you sleep or something I don't know I don't think so but I was it wasn't just me I was there with a boy and a girl as well we we we, we there was three of us in that flat the most hideous rundown grotty falling apart house flat you've ever ever stepped foot in I remember one time like opening my bedroom door and it just fell off and the windows didn't close properly because it was all on the wonk. That sort of thing. I'm not going to memory lane it, I'm not. <laughs> but that was further up again. That was near the Odeon where I used to work when I lived there. That's a long time ago. A long, long time ago. Before the wind, before the snow. Um. So where are we? What shall I talk about first that's crochet, more crochet related stuff? Um, um, I'll put some photographs in the show notes, just like one or two before I write a blog post. I don't know why I've just stared at myself like that. 
um, so that you can have a look. I always write show notes for every single podcast. Sometimes they're quite brief, but sometimes they're very detailed. It depends what I talk about, because if I only talk about a few things, then they're not going to be massively long. But if I cover a lot of stuff, then they're going to be longer. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that because a few people recently have been going, um, oh, could you point me in the direction of this thing you were talking about or that thing? And it's just like, love, it's all in the show notes. Go and check it out. Yeah. Ah, la, la, la. Where are we next? Where are we next? What shall I talk about? Well, this is, I, I showed this off last episode. I'm wearing it. It's now got tassels. I don't think it had tassels last episode, but I had just enough of each colour left to do these plump little tassels. Not everybody's a tassel lover, but actually it kind of weights, weights it down in the right places so that it doesn't come undone. And I have been wearing this all day because it's a bit chilly. There was grass. No, there was, there's always grass. There was frost. Yes, I know, wasn't there? There's frost on the lawn yesterday morning, so it is still very nippy. <laughs> You're a monkey, aren't you? I know! Sorry, he's gone nuts. <laughs> it's probably because you're here. <laughs> anyway, oh, let me say as well, um, I noticed a shop a few doors down from where I've done my display in a shop window of all my crochet samples, but it's like all the crochet that I shove in cupboards and never look at anymore. I got it all out and that's what I took. Um, not all of it's gone because I can see I've got an open cupboard over there with some of the stuff that I didn't really want to take with me. Could have done, but I was just like, no, I actually want to keep that. So there's a few things I've kept back because they might well fade and get ruined and I'm happy. All the things I've taken, I'm willing to sacrifice for the greater good. I already had a query, yes, like literally, um, I put it up on Saturday morning and yesterday, which was Monday morning, I had an email from somebody saying they'd walk past it and they really liked the blanket in the window and would would I be willing to sell it? Or they, but they didn't say sell that one, um, actually. I'm not willing to sell it until the end of the display, which is running until July. Um, but by then it might all be ruined. And I gave her my price for making it. She never got back to me. So I'm assuming it's a no-go. But um, I'm not going to do it for peanuts. So, as you know. I said £10 an hour. And it would take me approximately 15 hours to make the blanket, plus materials and postage. I don't think that's too unreasonable. I don't even, I think it might even take longer to, than 15 hours to make a blanket, I'm not sure. You know, not a massive one, sort of like a lap blanket. C to C one, you know, the zigzag one. Um, sorry, that was a tangent. I don't know what I was going to talk about next. It's gone. What was I going to talk about? <laughs> I don't know. Well, let me start by saying, restart by saying I have released two patterns this week. Um, because I'm on a roll, doing all right. Um, first pattern I've released is a, a very baby baby blanket very small but perfect baby blanket size quite a lot of the time I make baby blankets that are huge <laughs> and they're too big for babies but this one I've managed to sort of make it a reasonably reasonable size It is a corner to corner blanket because that's what I do. I am honestly making stuff now that's not corner to corner or granny, I promise. This blanket is my first blanket with the King Cole Ambassadorship program thingy that I'm on. Um, so this yarn was provided for free so I could try it out and then tell you about it. This is Paradise Beaches which has eight shades in the range 
for solid colours but I know that they also have variegated yarn in the Paradise Beaches collection which I think I've got some of as well but haven't done anything with yet. Um, I was drawn to this from the stuff they gave because it is solid colour and it is although on the pastel side one of the brighter things that arrived and so I thought it was probably more up my street. It is a blend, I think it's an acrylic polyamide blend, so I think, the, I'm not sure what it is, but there's something like ridiculously soft about this. It's almost like it's been washed in half a gallon of um, fabric conditioner, that's how soft it is compared to other acrylics. It's super squish, which I guess means that for a baby it would be lovely when, um, if you want something that's like easy to wash then that is the yarn. I would, I, I see no problem recommending it for the blanket. It works really well and I love the stripes. Such a simple idea. Um, but it works really well and then I got a comment from Clarissa Beth from Crochet Cakes on, on Instagram and she said it would look great in load of monochrome, so black and white and grey and stuff like that and she's right. And so I might well make a bigger version, but keep it all to greys and black and white. Not anytime soon. <laughs> but it's that has stuck with me enough to go, oh yeah, I like that idea, that sounds good. So that is my first finished object. And also it is now a pattern that is live on my blog and available for download on Ravelry and Etsy. On my blog I've provided the chart as a freebie and I'm aware that only like two episodes ago I was ranting about giving away stuff for free but bear with me. <laughs> the difference here is that it is also for sale on Ravelry and Etsy and the only thing I've put on the blog is the chart. No instructions, no nothing. Everything else however is in the pattern that you can buy. And I've done that because quite a lot of us are going to be at home for this foreseeable and um, I want to give you something to do. So if you want to make yourself a blanket then go for it. Um, and also like because I've got so much King Cole yarn for free I feel a little bit guilty making money off free stuff. However, arguably my design time is what's being paid for not the yarn so I mean Lots of grey areas here and I did say I'd go into it in more detail in the future and I think probably it deserves like a whole either episode, extra episode or blog post or something about how designers charge, why they charge and what they're charging for because all of those there are various different tiers and elements to that it's not straightforward and I learnt that from discussions at from that were born from that rant so it's all really interesting and I'll get there eventually but not today because it's half past two I've got one hour until I pick up the children from school because yes they are still at school um, for now that might not be the case and I'm assuming I'm going into work tomorrow um, I've got a person upstairs working from home because uh, they've been sent home from their office um, but I work in a hospital so I'll probably have to go in because it's all hands on deck right now, I'm guessing. I've purposely avoided checking my emails at work, checking my work emails. Because um, it's like not my day to be in, but tomorrow I'm due in. So I should probably check in a bit just to sort of try and be a bit more prepared, see what onslaught awaits. Probably not a lot actually, because um, the calmest place I have been in the last sort of two, three weeks since it all kicked off properly has been work because they're all experts and they know what's what rather than um, the panic buyers out there. So actually it's probably one of the most sensible places to be right now. Another digression. Apologies. Uh, da, da, da. So that was... Um, my first finished object. Oh, I remember what I was going to say now. 
before I completely and totally forgot where I was. They are the art installation. <laughs> My crochet bits and bobs in the window of that shop. A few doors down from there, there is a, there was a shop, and I've seen this shop before, but just not in Exeter, so it must be like um, a chain. I can't remember what it's called at all. The place I saw it previously was maybe three years ago in Stroud. Uh, when I went to Stroud, they had the shop. It sold blankets and sheets and wool. A very strange trio of things. Um, And because I'm completely and utterly crap, I bought mobile. If I accept that that will never change, perhaps I won't feel so guilty about doing it and just go, eh, that's just, that's just the way it is. Now I bought some strange stuff, a strange mix of stuff. Because I bought... I think about five or six of these. I don't know where the other one's gone. It's all the same stuff. Oh yeah, they had load. They sell mariner yarns, which I'm not familiar with. I've never used mariner yarns before. This is called Vista, super chunky, and it's all shade one three zero four. But they all look. Some of them look slightly different from each other. And this, I bought this after like literally two days ago saying I hate colour changing yarn. Technically it's not colour changing though, it's just colourful. Because um, I don't like colour changing yarn where it goes from one to the other to the other. I have no control over it and I don't like that. See these all look slightly different from one another but they are actually the same. It's just that the balls all start in different bits of this weird variant do you know also I think you know I can say things I can say a blanket I don't like not crochet blanket an umbrella of whatever I can I'm allowed to say I don't like color changing yarn um, but then have exceptions to the rule I am a rule breaker anyway I don't like pink I'll say one week and then two months later I'll be like pink is my favorite color shut up so with that sort of disclaimer, yeah, I bought colour changing yarn and I love it. I'm thinking uh, the very autumnal colours actually, so it's completely the wrong time of year. But um, ages ago, like a year and a half ago, I designed a C to C cowl for Molly Makes magazine, and I think I might do that cowl in this because I think it would work really nicely. Um, or I might knit something with it. Fancy knitting at the minute. Hmm. And then, but the, that's not the reason I went in the shop and it's not what caught my eye. This is what caught my eye. I don't know if you can see it there because it's blown out completely. A 400 gram ball of Aran wheat yarn with flex in it, so it's a nep. And this I want because I want to make another version of the forager's shawl. I can't remember if I mentioned it briefly last week. Last week I had a, a charcoal, one of these in charcoal, um, I think a Stylecraft one, and I was going to use that for the forager's shawl, but then I saw this and I was like, no, I want that in the forager's shawl. So I might make this for the forager's shawl, which was featured in an issue of Molly, no, uh, Inside Crochet. And I'm in, I'm allowed to release it now. I just need to get my hands on the tech edited pattern, and then probably make this up and then release it again. Do you reckon that for like this is like so Forager Shaw? The main is like um, trebles, US DCs, with um, some eyelets interspersed, and then there's a linen stitch border, a la Hinterland, <laughs> and then yeah, linen stitch border with these colours. Um, I think, unless I change my mind at some point, which is very likely to happen. Um, I might even add some of that char charcoal in there. But that's in my bag of tricks. Um, so I want to make that. 
but I'm not allowed right now because I'm working on a commission, which is coming along very nicely. Um, I can't show you. I'm on my second skein. It's um, it's this, which is Yana Delic. This is Pink Moon, and I'm crocheting a shawl design with it. It has a name and everything. I'm so pleased when the name comes straight away because so often I struggle with a name and I have struggled really quite a lot with a name for these puppies. Puppies? And then it came to me. I did it because um, one of my testers, thank you so much to my testers who have tested and these are now called fit to burst as in burst into bloom because they are my spring wrist warmers lightweight delicate yet warm um yeah i think one of my testers said because i'd said oh jesus guys i'm struggling for a name can you come up with some come up with something to help and um, one of my testers mentioned about blossom they look like blossoms because I was thinking buds but bud mm, I've already got another pair of mitts that I designed last year I designed them because I wanted to wear them to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year which I did but actually they need work on them I remember ages ago asking for testers for those and never did anything about it which made me feel terrible but they just weren't ready and actually I could bet they were so small I could barely get them on my wrists whereas so, so I, I moved away from those and I need to revisit them anyway um, then I then there are these um, and so bud wasn't a great word for me because I have a pair of mitts already designed called darling buds and I didn't really want to call these in bud, which was the only name I could come up with. But then somebody said something about the buds look like they're going to bloom or going they look like they're blossoms. And that made the blossom thing made me go, mm, blossom, what do blossom what does blossom blossom do? It bursts into bud. It burst. So fit to burst was where that came from. Um him upstairs, he said um they look like lobster pots. Perhaps I could call them crab traps. And I just thought, no, they're not crab traps. <laughs> so, but they are fit to burst. And I'm fit to burst with excitement that they are now published, ready to go. There's 20% off these, there's 20% off that C2C blanket up until the last day of March. The testers are my patrons. I went to Patreon first and left a little message and said would anybody be interested in getting first dibs on testing my new mitts and I think everyone maybe one person didn't but everybody else because I haven't got like a massive group of patrons yet there's not many of us but um, I'm hoping to do more and more things like offering tests and giving away sort of discounts and freebies um, the thing I did before was everybody got a free copy of Road to Nowhere, which is that one there. Um, and then this time around I asked if anybody wanted to test. No obligation, of course. With Patreon, I am heading in a direction of trying to make it more interacty and um, more, um, what's the word, rewarding, I guess. I, have, I still haven't done the tiers yet. Um, no matter how much, um, money is put into the pot so far everybody's had the freebies and the opportunities to do things like this and give me ideas about what um they're looking for in the future so that in turn means that i've got stuff added to my list that's waiting to be done and it just means because i'm only doing sort of the crochet stuff two days a week these things take time i am slower than a snail at all of it but i hope to get there eventually <laughs> eventually so anyway fit to burst they're out um 
They are mitts, they are wrist warmers, they are fingerless gloves, whatever you want to call them. Meet, 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 meet. And this, by the way, is the road to nowhere, just in case you wanted to know. It's a hound's tooth. No, it's not. It's not the road to nowhere, is it? What's it called? <laughs> Release the hounds. Did I say that? I can't remember. A hound's tooth shawl. The hound's tooth is far more um, standy outy in the double knit version and the arrow weight version than the chunky version. But it's still the same, it's the same shaping and stuff. And there is a little bit of hound's tooth to see. You would not believe, I've got a blister on my finger from how many pom poms I made on Friday night to get them hung up in the window for Saturday morning. Actually got a pom pom related blister. There's something else, what else? That's not everything. Oh, there's two more things, a whip and a finished object. So I'll take those off. Now I do wear them and I will be wearing them a lot more because I want to protect my hands. I have to get the bus to work and stuff like that. So um, I don't like touching the bus. Don't like touching anything in the bus. So, that was my phone. So I wear um, wrist warmers. I've still got lots of pom-poms left over. I love these ones, but I don't know what to do with them. And they could probably do with a trim anyway, because they, they, they were panic made, so they're not as tightly packed as they could be. If I had to trim them down a bit, I might get them to look a bit tighter. Um, but I love these. I love the, the colour combo. It's great. I wonder what to do with them. I should have probably just stuck them up in the window, but they got lost in the bottom of the bag, and that was it. I just... Um, I brought them home by accident. But I've got a bajillion pom-poms hanging in that window. I hope they stay up with the tape I used. Um, I'm getting hot. Excuse me. Okay. Well, I've run out. I've run out of wool, guys. I've got a front and a back and I haven't finished the back. This is this will be one, this is one panel that's front or back. So I'm guessing that I, I think I join like from here to here about for the shoulders on either side. And so it will be a loose fitting sort of boat neck style. But that is one panel of my loose leaf jumper which is from Cassie Ward's garment book, my crochet wardrobe. Oh, it smells real sheepy. I'll be afraid to wash this because I'm sure it will felt like anybody's business as soon as you put it anywhere near water. Um, so that's one panel. I stopped going wrong in the end as well. It's great and it's almost become come to a point where it's intuitive and I, and I sort of can feel when I need to start adding the next leaf. So I've gotten this far with 10 balls of yarn. Um, so I've got like another handful of rows to go on this one. And I've ordered six more, which I hope will be enough to finish this off and do the sleeves. But I got an email from Wool Warehouse this morning, which is where I ordered it from, saying that everything's on the slowdown because um, lots of people are self-isolating. And that means more orders but less staff, fewer staff. So I might be waiting a while to get those six balls because I know they've acknowledged the order but they haven't dispatched yet. So I might just have to put that out to one side. But I am actually now set on finishing that because at first I was like, maybe I should just frog it because I'm just not gonna have enough yarn. But I bought that yarn for the French press cardi. If I don't have enough yarn for this loose leaf Aran weight jumper, then I'm not going to have enough for the French French press Aran weight cardi either. I still might end up frogging this and doing the French press cardi with it or just buy a whole load new, a whole load more and make both, have both. I'm undecided, it depends on the fit of this. If this is ma 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 massive then I will probably frog it, it depends because I don't like it. 
Here's that disclaimer again. I don't like really baggy things. It's overwhelming on my top half. <laughs> I honestly. What am I looking for? Coming up soon, not today. I shall be reviewing this book as well. Um, Cozy Crochet Blankets by Anna Moray Soares. Sorry if I got your name wrong, Anna. Anna is, I think, what, and One Skin Love? Is that what you're called? I can never remember um, Insta names. Dreadful. Or I either remember somebody's name or not their Insta. And in this case, I always know her as Anna. Don't call her by... I think she's One Skin Love. Let's just have a look. If I can spell correctly, that would help. One. Skein. One skein of love. What about all the other ones? I've got loads of skeins. <laughs> um, anyway, Anna has written a book. Anna is a Portuguese crochet designer. And um, this book is specifically blankets. And I'm partial to a crochet blanket. And the only problem I have with this book, and I, I'm not sure if it's released yet, I think the blog tour starts, the book tour starts, the virtual book tour starts in the middle of April, so I'm probably not allowed really to show you much of this book at the minute, but it's um, Tuva Publishing, which also published Cassie's book, which I was hanging around somewhere because I'm using it for the loose leaf. So I just need to decide on which pattern I would like to make for my stint of the blog book tour. Um, and my date for talking about it, it's a long way off, so it seems, is the 4th of May. I didn't choose that date, Anna did, because I couldn't access the, um, the spreadsheet that she devised for putting your, your choice of date in. But it just so happens that the 4th of May is my birthday. So I thought it might be quite a good fun day actually to do my turn. So I'm, gonna, I'm happy to stick with the 4th of May. And so I won't mention that again, probs, until then. Because it's sort of a semi-secret really, I guess. This week, where are we today? Is Tuesday, so on Thursday, probably... Inside Crochet Magazine's coming out with a new issue and I have a design in it and I have the design here. Um, which doesn't always happen, sometimes they keep hold of it for a while longer. Um, but in this instance, I must have sent it in early or something and they photographed it and they popped it back in the post for me. I don't know how best to show it off actually. Um, because it's sort of like, I don't know what the... I, this is one where I literally could not come up with a name at all, so I've just called it a Cardi, no, like a, a rap forward slash bolero. <laughs> I wasn't sure to call it. Um, so it's, it's both, you see. It's just a rectangle and then Rather than join it with stitches, I've buttoned it closed so you can open the buttons and have it as a wrap or do the buttons up and it's a bolero. It's a bit sort of slouchy, so for me it's, um, you'd have to like really get it over your shoulders. Um, so it's sort of like a one size fits all because um, even if you're a few sizes bigger than me, this is still going to fit. There's still plenty of arm, um, arm room. I mean, it might not come down so forward on the forearms. Um, but I wasn't asked to grade it or anything like that. I don't know if it will come out graded in the magazine. Um, but it was just meant to be sort of like so it would fit lots of different sizes. And um, it would be easy to adapt if if you wanted it larger or smaller because you could just add rows or take them away because it literally is just a triangle I don't know what the best thing to do oh my god hands on cars I don't, I don't do very much tidying up I've just been sat on a whole load of little cars 
Um, so yeah, it's a bit creased because I've just been storing it in the cupboard. So it's not like full length or anything. Halfway up the back and um, very cash, but smart at the same time. Uh, do you like it? My favourite is the buttons. I like the buttons. Um, these are all buttons from my, just my button tin, which is a Hendrix tin. I keep it on the top shelf because um, years ago buttons were just, the children were drawn to buttons like sweeties almost and um, I had to keep them up out of reach so they just have remained high up on the shelf. Um, a selection of yeah all my favouritest buttons and I was like oh my god I hope whoever I hope they don't want to keep it I'm not going to let them keep this one um, because I want my buttons back uh, 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 you know at the very least I want these buttons back because they're so pretty don't know if you can see very well but um, I don't, it's not, not like I've got a great attachment to any of these buttons I think um, the only ones that I have any connection to, there's only one, all the other ones I think I've ever bought as vintage buttons, inherited from my nana but forgotten, um, or just, you know, they just, I think, yeah, I've just sort of like found them over the years, but the only one that has any kind of like, I like that one is this one because it's from a cardigan. Like the most beautiful, most skilled cardigan my, I ever saw my nana make. Um, I'm pretty sure it was those buttons. She made it for me. I asked. I, I found the pattern in the yarn. And my mum, who's not my nana's daughter, and my nana is my dad's mum. Um, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> um, my mum used to say, not in the nastiest way, but she she would say, my nana makes boring things, or made, died a few years ago. Um, she makes boring things. She's does, just got no kind of like, sense of making anything more than just like, a, a sort of standard jumper or a cardi. Um, but she always said but the skill was there she's very she was a very skilled knitter she just sort of didn't put herself to the test i suppose wasn't um i don't know uh i don't know what i'm saying really other than that that button is from a cardigan that my nana made me and i can remember my mum being really sort of quite Im Im impressed like going, oh my god i can't believe this thing of beauty has come from your nana which is like how rude! <laughs> but they get what she meant. <laughs> I do know other people like that who have such knowledge of their skill yet aren't willing to like experiment with it and see how complex a pattern they can follow and how, how far they can push themselves. In certain respects I'm the same. I mean how often do you see me making a granny square in a C2C blanket um, because um, <laughs> Do I want to try like broomstick crochet? No, cannot be asked. <laughs> or whatever it is, like all the other, there's lots of other things that I just haven't learned because I'm like, yeah, one day, and then just not bothered. Get there in the end though. Um, and then, yeah, we can unbutton it and then it's just a wrap. I don't know where I got the, I don't, I don't know, it's funny isn't it the things you remember because I would have been about 14 or 15 when she made me that cardigan and I can remember wearing it to a party once and then I never saw it again, I don't, just don't remember having it apart from what seeing it being made at my nana's house and having these buttons and my mum being like wow your nana can knit, why doesn't she do that all the time to um, wearing it once at a party on a riverboat shuffle or something like that and then like literally got no memory of it other than those two things and then so it is essentially just a a rectangle, a long scarfy shape, and then it's got ribbing on the end. And then I just sort of I just sew the buttons on there. And then they just get shoved. I didn't even make buttonholes, they just get shoved in between the stitches. And so you can have it as a or you could have it as a little scarf, it's quite short. Ooh. Or um 
So this will be in issue 124 of Inside Crochet and as I said it's coming out on I wonder if you could probably somehow button it there as well or if you turn it around you could button it closed that way I don't know um, I don't know how it will look in the magazine I've only seen like two three pictures so I don't know if, if they'll show it in many different ways so you could you could even button it because I couldn't I mean I haven't done a very good job but <laughs> oh I'm really pleased with that it's Baramutitis can't remember the name of the colour but this is um I like this yarn, it's very it's nice soft wool, proper wool, um, a four ply, it's worked up super fast. I hope you like it, I actually like it more now than I did when I was making it. I don't even know if it's my colour particularly, but I do like it, it's like, um, it's like a sage green, almost a grey green. it let me just check um what do I so I want to make the forager shawl and release that I want to release seven summits which is a hat um I've got a blanket coming up that I want to release that was in a magazine I'm just waiting for the blanket to be sent back um but I have started formatting that into a like so it will become a pdf pattern to buy in the minute it's 20 pages long though it's a big one. Uh, ZZ block, the zigzag blanket, that is now a full blown pattern um, rather than just being the chart that I charged two quid for with, and it had other stuff in it too. Um, but it's now the written pattern as well, the two charts and a C to C guide in it and also the block by block, row by row, these are the colours you need to do in however many blocks. Blah, blah, blah. Oh! Before I go, thank goodness for notes. I never would have remembered to show you this. A giant, it's Easter soon apparently. A giant Easter egg if you want. Um, freebie patterns on my blog and there's a YouTube tutorial which is probably one of my most popular tutorials not the pop most popular that's my market bag I'm going to be making more market bags soon I think because well I started one then I bought some yarn for something else and I went no that would be a market bag I don't mm, I don't know definitely make at least one more so if you wanted to make an easter egg the, the pattern is on my blog but this is like um, it's not finished around the pack, can be asked. Um, this is the mammoth version. I think it's two lots of chunky yarn held together. Whereas I think it might be up there. I'm gonna... I do this every year, I'm sure. And that's the double knit version. Same pattern, exactly the same. And if you want, that's on my blog and YouTube. I won't be. I was going to make some in the King Cole stripe yarn, but I don't know if I've got time. And I don't decorate the house for Easter. I made these purely for crochet sake, not for Easter or anything. Not because I want to use them to decorate. And actually, the kids just end up using them as footballs, really. So um, it's a bit tatty now. You can see it's got, that had moss stuck to it. For goodness sake. Um, so I'll put the links in the show notes and um, yeah go and make some because you've still got loads of time I don't actually know when Easter is it's, it's not in March this year is it it's probably April better to give you plenty of time isn't it? it's not like two days before Christmas and I give you a whole um, oops this dress still has the plastic plastic tag in it <laughs> it's new don't tell anybody but I shop at Tesco's. I think that's it.
pattern purchases this week I purchased Faye's new design called the Positivity Spiral I think all proceeds go towards um, something that's good that I can't remember Faye I'm just going to look it up that would probably be the best bet wouldn't it which one is it on The positivity spiral, 100% of the profit from the 1st of April, up until the 1st of April, I apologise, will go to Race on the Agenda. Apologies that I forgot the name of that. I never know half the time what I'm going to talk about until I stop talking about it and I haven't prepared. Um, but I would like to admit that it's a beautiful crochet design. A good example of modern crochet that isn't, um, I was going to say ugly and old fashioned, which is not what I mean. Um, just a good showcase of what crochet's potential can be. Um, it's really good. Go and check it out. I haven't made it, I've got no chance of making it anytime soon, but I want to. I've started buying patterns that I want to make. I'm not necessarily going to find the time to make them anytime soon, but I know that in the future there'd be something that I would like to make. And to support fellow designers, I will buy it. Because if I like it that much, then I should get it. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and I've written one last thing, which is hilarious. And oh my god, I hope it doesn't scupper their plans because I've got it if it does. One of my work colleagues is going to be a pop star. <laughs> He's been doing an admin apprenticeship at the hospital, but also has aspirations of becoming a singer. And he can sing. He really can. Um, he is very popular on TikTok. I joined TikTok. I've only got one follower and it's him <laughs> and I only follow one person and it's him. <laughs> um, his name is Tommy Lyon and he's in a band called Here At Last. <laughs> um, I hope they make it, I really do, because it'll be, it'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, he start, we started he was sort of roughly around the same sort of time at work, I think he might have started a couple of weeks later than me or whatever and we were got onto the subject of Instagram and he went, oh, I've got 14,000 followers. And I went, I've got 24. And he was just like, oh, that's a shame. I was like, no, not 24, 24,000. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, me, me, me. And then like, I don't know when I was like, two weeks ago, there was a post-it note on my computer and it was something like, just what I'd let you know that TikTok Tommy has overtaken you on Instagram now. So. Thanks. He's now got like 30,000 followers <laughs> and climbing all the time. So go ahead and check him out <laughs> or just check out here at last. Yeah, they, they look like a nice bunch of boys. <laughs> I wish them the very best, but they did. They, they're going on tour next week from his last week should be this week. But uh, and then they're going on a tour next week of all the schools to try and get known. But what will happen? I mean, I haven't, I haven't been at work since last week, so I haven't sort of found out if they've sort of got a, a, a backup plan. Like, what happens if all the schools close, or what happens if they're just not allowed to do the tour in the schools? Because obviously, you know, um, my corona. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah. Good luck to them, I guess. And that is it. Um, so if you are, yeah, if you're stuck at home, some of you, but the thing is, it's just like this just highlights the fact that some people are at home all the time anyway, because they have no choice, whatever the weather. It's not just a question of um, a pandemic. It's like, that is their life. So um, if anything, you know, maybe it makes us think a little bit more about um, the freedom that we do have. Uh, so yeah. I don't know where it's going. Oh my nose, it's gone really red. It is cold. 
uh yeah anyway i will see you again next time um i think that's it hope you're all right um do comment below about what you're up to and uh, what you're making king i don't know why i said it like that and um yeah cheerio bye, -bye.